Now, Steward Bankruptcy. Now, in a big surprise, Steward Healthcare, the largest physician-led hospital operator in the USA, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, this is under the US Bankruptcy Code, and it puts 30 hospitals over 8 states at risk. This news has rocked and shaken the healthcare industry. Now, this especially affects Medical Properties Trust, or MPW. MPW is the top hospital real estate investment trust that I know of, the top three, and it acts as Steward's landlord and main lender. Now, the scale of the financial issues that Steward is huge. Now, this bankruptcy filing is showing that it owes over $500 million to 30 creditors. Now, amongst these debts, there's more than $32 million owed to the US government as well. So, there's also reports from the Securities and Exchange Commission showing that Steward sold its hospital's land and buildings to MPW for over $1 billion. Now, this has put MPW at massive risk due to the healthcare sector's financial problems. So, let's just go over some of the key takeaways and some of the key messages here. So, yes, Steward has filed the Chapter 11. This is a reorganisation. It's the largest uh, physician-run hospital network in the USA. Now, the bankruptcy has 30 creditors that Steward owes money to. Um, it's more than $500 million in total, and that includes $32 million to the US government. Now, as Steward's landlord and the major lender and main lender here, MPW, is going to be affected by these financial challenges. There is no doubt about it. Now, Steward's previously over the years sold over a billion dollars of real estate to MPW, uh, and MPW now faces substantial risks here. Now, to help Steward, MPW is providing uh, an initial $75 million and may offer a further $225 million in financing. That's right, more money from MPW to Steward. Now, uh, Steward Healthcare is a well-known hospital real estate um, operator here, uh, sorry, uh, hospital operator, they're a key player in the healthcare business. Now, the company has chosen to uh, ask for and follow a Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Now, this is going to be a major step in their plan of how they're going to work this turnaround and deal with some of these serious financial issues that the company is facing. Now, this is a voluntary filing, it's a restructuring focus, and Stewards made the choice to go down this Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This is their choice, it's voluntary, and they want to make their activities in their organisation more efficient. Their goal is going to be to continue to give good care to the patients over their many hospitals. They do, however, continue to face uh, challenges from insufficient uh, reimbursements and uh, increasing um, rising costs. And this need, then, that's pushed them to bankruptcy has come from several different problems. Now, these problems include getting insufficient money back from the government, uh, the cost of labour has been going way up, and, of course, the overall cost of running their hospitals has become higher and higher because of inflation. Now, of course, we cannot forget the overall effect of COVID-19. Now, together, all of this is putting pressure on Steward. Now, they felt, their managers felt, that the best way out was to file for Chapter 11. It's going to give them the time and the opportunity to work on their debts, to get organised, and to re-examine their debts that they have. So let's have a, another look at Steward Healthcare. 30 hospitals, 8 states, uh, with a big chunk in Massachusetts. Uh, the list of creditors here and bankruptcy, more than 30 um, organisations. And these creditors are owed a substantial amount of money in total, as I've said, with the US government alone expecting more than $32 million back. Now, Stuart is making a number of different deals here for special financing while in bankruptcy. Now, MPW is going to provide a large tranche here of uh, $75 million, with potentially up to another $225 million later. That's $300 million potentially in total. Um, is this more money, good money after bad? Um, Stuart is, however, staying focused, and they, they do seem to be aiming to get through this bankruptcy process, and they are working hard while they do this to maintain coverage and uh, service provision to their patients. So, when we think about this, MPW is not just the landlord, they're also the lender as well. They're an essential lender at this point, and seem to be crucial to the stewards' bankruptcy case and reorganisation. They're offering um, debtor and possession financing that will help keep Stuart running while they reorganise. Now, this is going to give them a head start, essentially, um, when this first $75 million tranche is going to help Stuart with your day-to-day -day operations and providing medical care. Um, and it's really then um, during this uh, financing phase that they're, they're going to be, I think, struggling a little bit more. Now, the potential $225 million additional financing, uh, the, this help is going to depend on Steward reaching particular asset sales. So it's not sort of guaranteed or in place yet, but it will be a key part of the effort to deal with uh, debts and leases at Steward. Um, 
and that support of that sort of back stop from MPW is going to be really important for that restructuring at Steward. So MPW, as I said, it's not just the landlord, but it's also a main financial backer at this point, um, helping and supporting through that bankruptcy process by providing this financing that will enable Steward to continue to provide healthcare services, and that's going to be important during this tough rebuilding phase. Now the amount of debt revealed, wow, uh, Steward Healthcare just shared that it's a huge debt burden, um, and that really shows how tight I think that money struggle is at Steward. So the, the bankruptcy case here is really bringing their loan debts and long-term lease payments into view and into the spotlight here, and it's also showing the bankruptcy liabilities uh, and the huge healthcare debt that is leading them to make these changes. So we're talking about uh, some pretty big numbers here, with Stuart admitted to owing about $1.2 billion in loans. Um, this money is owed to a variety of different lenders uh, from everywhere from tech firms uh, in terms of technological support through to staffing groups. Now these loans have just continued to grow and so the debt problem has snowballed and it's just over time worsened their financial situation. Uh, debt is like a hole, it's hard to dig out of once you're stuck in it. They've also got these long-term lease payments. Um, $6.6 billion are owed on leases, mostly to MPW, and these uh, medical properties trust leases run through to 2041, so this is a long-term commitment. Uh, it's a huge part of their overall debt and burden in the future, and this is going to be a big part of what they need to address in order to fix things and make things work for Steward as they work through the bankruptcy and their liabilities. Now, the liabilities uh, include loan debts, these long-term lease payments, and it's just showing this big problem here, this massive uh, debt burden that they're going to have to address in order to stay operational and to keep helping their patients. Now, when you think about Steward's bankruptcy, it is going to affect MPW, uh, and it's just going to add pressure to MPW. And this is simply because of the concentration here, where Steward is the biggest renter and tenor to MPW. Now, they've got a, already a huge stake with Steward, uh, with a large number of about $7 billion, 6.9 due over before 2041. Uh, and so this is going to impact MPW's ability to pay their own dividends. So if there's an ongoing problem, a lack of money, then MPW is going to face problems if Steward can't pay them. It's going to mean for MPW less money coming in and their own challenges meeting financial promises and commitments. So MPW could find it increasingly hard to continue to pay dividends to investors if this is not resolved. Now, as well as that, the it has wider impacts for wider communities and, and environments as well because of the, the risk of the loss of provision of healthcare. Uh, and so they're, they're absolutely trying to work things out with Steward, um, but as Steward is going through the bankruptcy, MPW is definitely going to be watching really closely because of the impact it's going to have on MPW's business. Um, MPW is definitely going to be looking at uh, taking some more steps here to lower their risk and to minimise the impact on their investors. And of course there's also the potential asset sales and lease uh, renegotiations um, that Steward Healthcare will be taking care of during this bankruptcy. So I believe the plan is going to be to sell uh, many of these hospitals, the bankruptcy asset sales auctions will be held um, in Florida in the next couple of months. Um, I believe by the end of July uh, 30th they're going to be looking to, to net $225 million dollars. Um, also in that financing from MPW by hitting their KPIs to make that feasible, to make that viable um, and, and together that should put them in a good position to, to manage the situation. Now these auctions are going to be crucial um, for Steward during this bankruptcy um, asset sales effort. Now the organisation is going to be trying to offload quite a large amount of real estate quickly Now that comes with risks. Because with this tight auction schedule it's really going to, to make it difficult to move that volume at the right price because these are quality assets, there's no doubt about it. Now there's also the possibility of rent concessions on the remaining properties as well and so there's a huge amount of lease renegotiation that will be going on. Uh, it's highly unlikely that new operators are going to want to maintain the current leases and so that will be a huge issue as well. So in terms of both renegotiation and rent concessions, this is highly likely to also hit Medical Properties Trust in the long run as well. Now this is uh, coming through from Steward's overall financial issues as well as their lease stability. So as the story continues, I think everyone's going to be watching these hospital sales and lease changes really closely. And I think as an investor in MPW, that is something that will be most important uh, as well um, because it's going to have a huge impact on what Steward can pay and their financial health moving forward. Now, 
beyond this as well, there's also huge concerns with patients and with the wider healthcare system. And as the CEO has said, you know, nearly 230,000 staff, uh, 4,500 doctors, we're basically told that everything's going to continue to run as normal. Uh, but the officials in Massachusetts want the company out by the looks of it. You know, it looks like they're afraid that it's going to lead to closures of some services and some clinics as well. Um, and, and this facility closure and the potential for service disruptions, I think, is a very serious issue as well. So when we're thinking about this, I think we're, we're really getting some confusing messages here and there's still a huge amount of uncertainty here simply I think due to the huge amount of money that's being owed um, employees and visitors from what I can see in the media seem to be getting mixed messages about what's going on with the hospitals and despite the efforts here I think from Steward CEO trying to calm down staff um, the other messaging from the state I think it's just making everything very confusing uh, it's muddying the water uh, and, and it's really I think fueling concerns that the, the handover and the changeover for the hospital operators may not be as smooth as what people want or expect to see. Now, the, the state oversight and patient care ombudsman looking after the patients is going to be, you know, watching stewards' um, locations really, really carefully. Uh, and this ombudsman is really going to be looking out for the, the rights and looking out for the concerns and making sure that both patients and staff are going to be heard during this bankruptcy uh, process. So, as far as I can see, also there's a, a link down below to a process, uh, a website filled with lots of information about the case. So let's just go over then some of the key points here. You know, why is this steward health bankruptcy important for MPW? Well, steward's bankruptcy, it's a massive issue for MPW. It's the top tenant, the largest tenant, and MPW is likely to lose a lot of money and a lot of revenue because of this issue. Now, if Stuart ends their leases or cannot pay rent, it's going to impact MPW financially. Now, they're also then going to have difficulty as a company keeping their own promise around dividends to their investors. So when we begin to think about this, you know, how much financing has MPW provided to Stuart during this bankruptcy proceeding? Now, on top of all the other money provided, they're providing a further $75 million during bankruptcy and may provide up to another $225 million more if Stuart can sell their assets successfully at the right prices. So when we also think about this, it's important to understand the debt burden that Steward faces. Now they say they owe about $1.2 billion in loans, um, and it's also got about $6.6 .6 billion in long-term lease costs all tied up as well, mostly to MBW, their main landlord. So when we begin to look at this as well, it's important to think about the plans then for the potential asset sales and lease renegotiations. So uh, on June 28th, they're going to be selling, um, it's other than Florida, um, hospitals as well, hoping um, to finish up by July 30th. They're going to have to do this and get the right prices and move these well enough to get the additional help from MPW. Now they might have to lower rent prices um, to make this more attractive as well. And that uh, adds to the financial burden and the risk. So when we think about this, how are the employee and patient concerns going to be taken care of uh, during this period as well? Uh, there is still, as I said, a lot of confusion about this. Well, Steward's CEO claims everything's going to be good. Officials in this Matt state of Massachusetts aren't so sure. They're worried about uh, facilities closing down and patient care being affected. So they're going to be watching like a hawk, I suspect, to make sure everybody is going to be taken care of and looked after uh, very well. So when we begin to think about that, I think that pretty much wraps it up as to, to where we are today and some of these key challenges that we can observe.